morning, everyone. How are you doing today? Okay? I'm doing well. And I want to have another podcast here. Uh, I'm getting ready to go out for a shoot. And I want to share some books with you folks. I want to do this quick. But at the same time, um, I'm coming from you from the white room. I like shooting in here just because there's less noise. And it's quiet. And I can somewhat control the situation, even though had a couple little nightmares already. I'm preparing my drawing table area for shooting. Uh, it's all about getting the right fixtures and the right mounts for the camera placements. I've spent a lot of money on rent. And I've decided that basically for this part of my life, um, seeing that I have a bucket list that hasn't been checked off for a long time due to a forest fire or two. I have to basically um, consolidate my focus so my portfolio stays intact. Uh, like any photographer and any business person, there's there, there's ups and downs to go with. And most of these ups and downs have to do directly with the competition and the change in the marketplace and the industry. And the biggest thing with me was a turnover from film to digital, but also on top of that, uh, stock market crashes, COVIDs, SARS, I've seen it all and I've survived it all and the portfolio still is being produced and my work is still improving. Um, in the Canadian Rockies, you're gonna, have a, you're gonna have a successful time as a photographer if you know all the rules. And I've, I've studied and I've understudied all the rulers, okay? The rulers of photography as follows. There are individuals that have just outshined them all, okay? And I am one of those individuals. Um, with my last business, before the stock market crash of 2008, I was listed in the number four, number five spot of poor band photography. And that's as big as you want. For Lake Louise, I was listed number one on Google for Lake Louise photography. And it should be that way because technically my outdoor photography career in the Canadian Rockies started at Lake Louise. And this is the secret of it all. If you want to know how I became Johnny I Spy, it's because my eye for detail in a photograph led Skiing Louise to call me Johnny I spy because there was lots of Johns on the on the uh, mountain and I was the photographer that was so addicted to his job that and I've always misunderstood my job as my wife <clears throat> and as my, as my mistress <clears throat> in all honesty I've lost girlfriends because they thought I was in love with Photoshop more than them and I've had some pretty pretty girls you know like, believe me and it's not because I'm talented, it's just because I'm a nice guy, I'm generous. I'm not worried about money. I'm independently wealthy. Even when I'm broke, I have more money than most people. Just because I know how to invest my time. I know that the art lingers, right? So having a big title mortgage is not what is going to keep me remember, remembered in history. Now let me talk about some photographers that have told me, and some illustrators, but mostly let me, let me talk about these photographers and illustrators that have really led me down the road um, that I'm on. First off, let's talk about one of the most brilliant photographers in the history of Canada, Mr. Nicholas Morin. He was the go-to guy for CP Railway. And then when the war kicked in, Canada borrowed him and he took war photos. But he has photographed Canada like nobody else. He really is somebody. And to be quite honest with you, he has more photographs on the back of Cana on the backs of Canadian money than any other photographer I know. He's numero numero uno. And many photographers do not photograph like him whatsoever anymore. Um, he was the guy. Like, he would make CP 
build platforms for him so he could get the right angles. That's how good he was, and nobody does that now. Except for me. I will go out of my way to find the right location for the right angle, and, uh, and that's what I do. I will walk high and low, I will go up and down cliffs, I will follow every single boat trail. And the way I do, the reason why I do this is because it's my, it's my ground, right? It's my backyard. My family drew up the park. That's the way I look at it. My family was the very first family to come over to Canada. We built the very first church on the shores of Ontario. A whole bunch of stewards came out here. We set up the boundaries. I've been drawing castles ever since my childhood. It was my very first compulsion. So I know I'm part of these, this family. And I look like these people too, right? So... And if my grandma, grandfather says we were the first to come over and we came over here and if I learn all the stuff about King James and everything through the Stuarts, it's me, right? It's my family, right? But most importantly, my grandfather on my mother's side is Sulu Lakota. So it's my ground anyway. My, I mean, <laughs> I have 15% I have of my blood being native, you know, from my grandfather's line of Sulu Lakota. And, and then... My grandparents were the first to get here to Scotland, or I mean, get here to Canada, which was New Scotland, right? <laughs> okay, so now let's move. So this is this is the reason why I am, I am. And it's the reason why I say it's my backyard, right? Because technically it is my backyard. Okay, so, next big photographer in the area is Condon Known. People love Doug, right? Really big. This book was published for a decade and a half, and they're still kicking around. Exact same book, they didn't change anything, they changed just dust jackets, they, they, they just trick com consumers. People were jumping off of basically buses and trains and planes to be here for only a couple hours, and they don't even have time to take pictures or get good at it, so they're just gonna grab a, a book like this that looks hot, right? Then there, is one of the grandfathers that gave me a lot of instruction, Bruno Engler, okay? This guy is an amazing guy. Unfortunately, we never saw enough work from Bruno, but he was a local favorite and everyone loved him, so there's a pretty book. And there was even a bar named after him for a while, but that was trashed, right? So, now we move on my personal adopted grandfather of photography. The one that I spent more time with than any other photographer. I have a relationship with this man that nobody else has. And this man right here died shortly after he published his book. Look how beautiful it is. The thing about George is that he was a mechanical photographer. He'd go out there in the mountains when there was no... He didn't use batteries. All of his cameras were mechanical Pentax cameras, fixed lenses, everything. Fuji, the Via film, everything, right? He never went digital, and he has published 50 books on the Canadian Rockies, 50-plus books, and this was the last one. And, I mean, in the artistry through the books is elemental. Every photographer out there who has an R6 that says that they're the king of everything has to bow to George. Because until you publish 55 books independently, each one generating the next one, all unique, until you do this, until you do this, you're not him. And in this book, look at this photograph, okay? Look at that photograph. What does that book, what does that say? George was the very first selfie guy of the Canadian Rockies. This is his backyard. He did it all with film, no remotes. He's the man, okay? We're all ripping off George when we do selfie shots, okay? You know what I really don't like about this selfie business? And I never went down the selfie road. I could have, believe me, this is what pokes me the wrong way about the selfie business. George has published more books. He's been invited to more countries. And when he died, nothing was done for this gentleman. What he has done for the Canadian Rockies, nothing was done for this gentleman. There should be a monument for this guy. 
He broke his back for his work, crawled out of the mountains without even being eaten by a lion by himself, sat in the Calgary Foothills Hospital, and for what? A photograph that was never ever taken before with film. He broke his back when he took the shot. I got the whole story. He broke his back before he took the shot. He laid there and waited for the sunrise. And then he crawled back to the car. And he drove himself back to the Hills Hospital and he just stayed there for two weeks. I don't see too many selfies out there doing this right here. Now, this is a really amazing shot by George. Look at this one. This is the Columbia Ice Field. Look at this book, right? Look where the Columbia Ice Field was. This is 1978 when this book was published. And look at the cover, eh? Found it on Amazon. But he's got all the shots. I mean, the gentleman, look at this beautiful shot right here, eh? Look at this coming in really nice, so. He was the first to do it all. And I'm gonna be quite honest with you, this is what really chokes me about the whole tire Bamp scene and Canadian Rocky scene. George was an immigrant from Poland. He came over here for the mountain life. He didn't set up his tent in the middle of winter to get a picture of the Northern Lights. He made. What did he make? He made igloos. Look at the pictures. This right here, my folks, my friends, is his final. His final masterpiece book. And you can see, 40 years. From 1978 to 2018. What can happen to your career? 1978. What can happen to your career? Stay focused, folks. Make your heart happy. Be original. And you can be like me. Because I'm original. George told me the only way to be creative, the only way to be original in the Rockies after him is to do everything he did in time lapse. He spent 50 years of his life climbing 500 peaks in the Canadian, Rockley, in the Canadian Rockies solo. And he produced 55 books from those 500 peaks. All original books. He is the number one mountain photographer on planet Earth until someone does the same thing. All the best and kind regards, and I hope you loved this, list, this history lesson.